What's up fellow soldiers, my name is Cloud, and today I'm going to explain the entire Final Fantasy VII storyline in a way that won't make a Kingdom Hearts fan orgasm. Before I get into it, you guys can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, links in the description. And if you guys love Final Fantasy VII as much as me, feel free to press that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I'll be making way more FF7 content in the future, so stay tuned. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, before we get into it, I need to stress something. I will be following the story of the original, not the remake. The remake at the time of recording this has only had one part released, and not even like any news about the second, so I can't wage anything off of that. And there are some story changes in the remake that aren't in the original that I don't want to get into just yet. I might do videos on the remake when every part is released, but for now, I can't do that. So, yeah. But now, let's start on disc one. So the game begins, and we're given a great shot of the most beautiful face the PS1 can offer. Pen out to the entire city in Midgar, Q logo, train time. We are introduced to Cloud, Barrett, Jesse, and the other two dudes who the writers didn't give enough personality to, so I don't care about them in this game. Go through Mako Reactor 1, fight a giant scorpion who, despite me playing this game for five years, still died to in this playthrough. Run out of the Mako Reactor before we get blown up, officially but not officially meet Aerith. Dash to the train, and meet up at 7th Heaven where we meet Boob, the character, and I mean, I mean Tifa. We do some shopping, head down the rabbit hole of pinball, and then sleep on Tifa's chest. Tifa then joins the party, and you commit more terrorism! Yay! Except this time, Claude gets blown up by the Airbuster. Just kidding. Claude flies down all the way into the church in, in the Sector 5, and is somehow still alive. I don't understand that. We then officially meet Aerith, have a chat with Edgy the Hedgy over here, and make our way to Aerith's house so we can plow- I, I mean sleep. Next morning, get up and head to Sector 7, fight a literal fucking house, and play at a children's park. We have a chat with Aerith, but get rudely interrupted by Tifa, who's being captured by an oversized ostrich, and since Cloud wants to bang Tifa, he goes to try and save her. He then discovers that she was going to see Don Corneo, a mob boss and sex addict, I guess. And Cloud learns that only females are allowed into his hideout, so he has the ingenious plan of cross-dressing as a girl, so we can go in and save her. And he is BEAUTIFUL! So Cloud is picked to be Corneo's next bitch, is inches close from getting that sweet, succulent Corneo cucumber. But Tifa and Aerith interrupt, and they all fall down in the sewers. The trio then fight Alps, and since this is the first time these three are in the same party, you can finally have that sweet threesome. Go through the sewers, get high on bubbles, and make your way up to the train graveyard. It's here that you get to simultaneously play with the corpse of Tana, the tank engine, but you also get to fight a dude that looks like he's straight out of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We then discover that Shinra, the group that you apparently have been trying to stop in this game, is going to drop the Sector 7 plate, killing everyone and everything in it. Tifa sends Aerith to get Barrett's daughter, who's mentioned like three times in this game, and Cloud goes to try and stop them. Jess and the other two to die, R.A.P. Jesse. Cloud reaches the top of the tower, reunites with Tifa and Barrett. Boss time. It's Edgy the Hedgy back for round two, but not really. And he then proceeds to make our team living pharaohs. We absolutely demolish Reno, yet still lose somehow, and the Sector 7 plate is dropped. By the way, Aerith and Marlene are fine, although Aerith got captured in exchange for Marlene's safety. Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa all make it out alive. They all cry for loss of their home and whatnot. Well, Cloud doesn't, because he's cool and edgy and strong and stuff. They then make their way to Aerith's house because Barrett wants to see Marlene, and begin backstory on Aerith, sort of. You basically learn that Aerith is an ancient, or Cetra, but Cloud and the gang save the night and head off to rescue Aerith from Shinra. They head back to Wall Market, climb Trump's wall, and make their way to Shinra HQ. Save game, climb 69 flights of stairs, solve the stupidest puzzle of all time, Cloud ditches his dead friend's weapon in favor of the color red, and save Aerith. Psych Hojo, the scientist doing experiments on Earth, decided, hey, let's have two endangered species and make them have sex. There, endangerment problem solved. So the endangered animal, who just looks like a cross between d the Duck Hunt Dog and Charmander, joined the party, and you proceed to find the dude you were trying to kill in the game, dead, but not by your hands, so you get pissed and then proceed to beat the ever-living crab out of his son and his pet dog. Ransack the village for a cool motorcycle, as well as a pickup truck, Cloud transforms into Shadow the Hedgehog, and we finish off against a boss that looks like a tank got breast implants on its tires. Walk off into the distance and wonder what happens next, take a break so I don't piss my pants from all the mountain dew I've been drinking, and we move on to the world map. Okay, so it's at this point in recording that I realized that half of my footage for this got corrupt. And I'm not recording 11 hours of gameplay again. So here, I'm just gonna put this funny gif of Cloud up for the rest of the video. So yeah, bye!
It's here that the game kind of slows down progress-wise. You're mostly just going to be grinding for levels in the overworld at this point, but story-wise, the party moves to a place called Calm, where Cloud gives us more backstory on himself. It's not really that important, all you really need to know is that Cloud in these flashback sequences isn't Cloud, but his black-haired friend, Zack. You know, the guy that gave him the Buster Sword? Yeah, he's, he's dead, so yeah. That's it. So the team goes to fight a giant snake that you will more than likely die to, because this is still very early game, ride a giant yellow flamingo across the desert, and arrive in a cave. It's here that you meet Discount Elsa in a tuxedo and Gru with sunglasses. They threaten you and run off like a freaking Scooby-Doo villain. You then make your way to a giant tower and meet who I could only describe as Little Timmy. Find a giant bird and save the place from the other side of terrorism. You leave before they invite you into their cult and go beat up a teenage girl in the woods. Yeah. She then proceeds to join your party, but don't worry, she doesn't really matter, she doesn't appear in any cutscenes, and she doesn't really have that big of an impact on the story. So if you want, you can shun her more than the caterpillars in my 4th grade classroom. Anyways, you then head down to a town called Junon, save a girl from drowning, and have fun with the dolphins. Not really, it's, it sucks. Cloud then proceeds to join a marching band and show the enemy how he's going to flex on them later. You board a boat, you feed vomits on you, and you have a nice vacation at Costa del Sol. It's here that Cloud gets some of the best dialogue in the game, as he mentions all the hot girls in bikinis, which is like, super funny. Yeah, it's great. You talk with the weird scientist guy and leave. It's here that the gang decides to go have fun at a rundown Disneyland and almost die. The team gets what they came for, which for the life of me, I can't freaking remember. Then head to the actual theme park, the Gold Saucer. It's here that you meet a cat riding a giant sack of Oreo cream. You head to the arena because Cloud wants to start a fight, get falsely accused of murder, then get thrown in prison. It's here that Barrett finishes his character arc, but I don't really care about it because this part freaking sucks! Cloud learns that to get out of prison, he's, he needs to win a chocobo race. He does, pick up the raw moon material because if you don't, I guess you're fucking blind, and get the hell out. You then get the buggy in, which you use maybe 10 times, but you then head to Cosmo Canyon, do the stupid dog's character arc, and throw a healing item at a boss to one-shot it. Do some more shopping, and get back on your oversized moped. You then head to Cloud and Tifa's hometown of Nibelheim. Rescue the vampire trapped in the coffin, and Vincent joins your party. Again, he doesn't really matter, so you can abandon him like my middle school crush. Fight a giant crab, then head back to the gold saucer. It's here that one of the female members comes into your hotel home at night, and you go on a date. You star in the play, kill the dragon, and end the night with sex in the gondola, which is, like, super funny. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, what a man from Alabama joins your party somewhere along this... Yeah. Yuffie then proceeds to steal everything you're worth, a.k.a. your materia. So you chase her down in her hometown to get it back. You find her in an old woven bat, skit, kick her ass for being a brat, and she runs off and gets herself captured by Don Corneo, which you thought was dead. You save both Elena and Yuffie, and she's your friend again. You then head to the Temple of the Ancients, fight Trump's wall, and obtain the Black Materia, and Cloud starts having worse mental problems than me in high school. Sephiroth is controlling them via the Black Materia, or something, I can't remember. You destroy the Temple of the Ancients, killing the one ugly man inside, you have a wet dream about Aerith, and she goes missing. You find her at the City of the Ancients, praying atop a thing, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what it is. Cloud, who is still being controlled by Sword Gandalf over here, tries to get him to kill Aerith. But he won't budge, so he does it himself. Cue everyone in 1997 crying their fucking eyes out, and the Genova boss commences. The tears finally stop, CGI cutscene, and Cloud drops Aerith into the lake, and that ends part one of this three-part series. Well, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. This video took so long to make. You know, I had to record 15-plus hours of game footage, and half of it got corrupted, and I still made the video. So, be happy. I, I, I don't want to freaking know. But if you liked it, make sure to cross slash the subscribe button. Like I said in the intro, I'll be making a lot more Final Fantasy VII content in the future. So if you're excited for that, make sure to hit the subscribe button and drop a like down below. And to turn on post notifications. You know, all, all the YouTube shenanigans. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.